Hello everyone. After around 15 years of faithful service, my old Tefal steam generator iron bit the dust. So as that one had been so good, I decided to invest in another Tefal. This is a Tefal Pro Express Protect Professional Technology model number GV9230. It's uh, nearer the top of the range. There are more deluxe ones than this. It's sort of mid to top of the range. And uh, I thought uh, I'd unbox it on this channel. We'll have a look at it and I'll actually do some ironing. So without any further ado, I'm going to remove the iron from the box and we'll take a closer look. Here's the iron out of the box. And incidentally, this Tefal iron is made in France, not China. So that's another plus point I'd rather buy from Europe or the UK than a Chinese made product. So this is a French made iron and picking up the iron, it is very, very light. Obviously there's no water tank in the iron itself, which keeps the weight down. In the old days, it was an advantage to have a heavy iron, but nowadays, especially with a steam generator, you don't need the weight. You don't want the weight actually in your hand. When you're doing a lot of ironing, especially, it's gonna be very tiring. So it is very light. And I must say it's comfortable to hold. We've got a very nice sole plate. This is Tefal's Derillium. I think I've pronounced that correctly. Air Glide Auto Clean Sole Plate. So hopefully we're not gonna get any of those brown marks that you can sometimes get on the bottom of irons. We've got a little trigger just here. Just a very light touch is all you need to produce the steam. If you press that trigger three times in succession, it goes into boost mode and it gives you the maximum amount of steam. That's useful for your heavier items like denim. But you'll notice that there are no other controls. There's no thermostat on this iron, there's no dial, there's no slider, because you don't need one with this. All you do is set the iron going and you can either have eco or the regular mode. And as long as the fabric is suitable for ironing, and you can check your labels for that. It will have a dot symbol, one, two, or three dots to symbolize the dot positioning that you'd normally put a, tr a traditional iron on. So as long as you can iron it, you're fine. No settings, you just keep ironing because the temperature this sole plate uses is suitable for even the most delicate items. Again, as long as it's suitable for ironing. You've got quite a large foot here so you can put the iron down like that, but of course you might want to just pop the iron back on the base in between your garments. It's a, a pretty long steam cable. It's probably over a meter. I'll put all the specifications of this iron under the video. So that should be fantastic for even the largest ironing board. There's no problem reaching everywhere. And of course you've got a mains cable as well and that I would say that's at least a meter in length. As a safety feature if you leave the iron unattended it will automatically switch off after eight minutes. This is the control panel of the Tefal iron. You've got the on off switch here so when you press that the iron will start to heat up and that will take approximately two minutes. While it's heating the light will flash and also whichever mode you've got on that will flash as well. When the iron has reached temperature, the light remains static. So switch on and then select the mode, either eco or normal using this button here. And this OK button is there to reset the warning indicator that comes on when you need to empty the scale collector. And I'll show you that in a minute. Once you've emptied the scale collector, you can press the OK button to turn off the warning light. To empty the scale collector, you need to turn the dial anti-clockwise and only do this when the iron is cool. So just turn it and then pull out the scale collector. And if you live in a hard water area, you'll notice little bits of scale just here collected. So all you have to do is just tip that out, give it a rinse and then pop it back in the iron and you turn clockwise to secure it. Make sure it's tight, don't over tighten, but you need to make sure that that's on properly. Tefal recommend rinsing out the boiler every six months or 25 uses, whichever is the sooner. And you'll see the full instructions of how to do that in the instruction book. 
The translucent water tank is located at the front of the iron and you just pull it to remove it to fill and then it fills here via this hole up to the max fill line. You don't have to fill it all the way if you've only got a few items to iron, but it's always best once you've finished the ironing to empty out any unused water. You can put tap water in this, but if you live in a hard water area, you might be better to use distilled water. But of course, this machine will collect the scale anyway, but um, I won't need to use distilled in my iron because I do live in a soft water area. So once it's filled up, up to the max line, it just pushes back in until it clicks, switch on, and the iron is ready to use in a couple of minutes. Now, what I like about this iron is its storage facility. Unfortunately, my previous T-Fowl had an automatic cable rewind system. They seem to have done away with that on current T-Fowl irons, so we've got somewhere else to store the cable. But first of all, you need to store the steam cable and it's fairly it's brand new so it's it's fairly rigid but I think with use and certainly when there's hot steam going through it it will loosen up but that stores on board the iron I've got grooves to put it in all the way around here just at the bottom so this is the first time I'm doing this so it's not going to be easier to do because as I said it's quite rigid might have to untangle it a bit. But I've, I've found with use, certainly with my previous t fowl this does loosen up. It does get a little bit more flexible. So you just have to feed it through just here at the bottom. If I can get it in. Yeah, that is a bit tricky. There we go. Pushes through. And only do this when the iron's cold so leave the iron on a worktop obviously away from any children that might want to pull it down don't leave this hanging down the edge of your worktop keep it out the way also just here there's a little clip that will lock the iron in place so that means you can actually lift it which is a handy feature so again you've got to feed it through this isn't as easy as my previous tea fowl but as I said, it is brand new, so it's going to be a bit stiff. Let's push it through. There we go, that'll do. It's, it's sticking out a bit, but you get the general idea. It does support and store the steam cable. Now, there is supposed to be a way of storing the mains cable as well. Obviously not as convenient as having an automatic cable reel button. Just can't see where it's supposed to go on this iron. The only downside I've found about this iron so far is the lack of mains cable storage. So basically, you're just going to have to coil it up like that. And then you could just slot it through the top of the iron like so, and it just keeps it neat and tidy. It's best to wait for the iron to cool down before storing it, but if you're storing it in a utility room or in a large cupboard, you can put it away hot, but just not if you're putting it away in an enclosed cupboard. So let it cool down first before putting it in the storage position and then putting it in the cupboard. But you can actually, while the iron is hot, store it like this if you've got a suitable storage area with plenty of air around it. As I said, don't put it in a confined cupboard when it's hot. But it's very good, the fact you can lift the whole iron up using the handle of the iron. My iron lives in my cloakroom. that's just off from my kitchen. And um, it's much easier to carry. I've had another steam iron, the previous one I tried, that didn't have any storage and it's very awkward. Both the mains cable and the steam cable were loose and there was nowhere to put them. But now I've got this new T-Fell iron. It all keeps fairly neatly until I use it, until I need to take it out and put it on my ironing board. Quick word about ironing boards. You can't use any old ironing board with a steam generator. You really need to look for one with a mesh base that's designed for high output steam irons. So the steam goes through the mesh base. Some older ironing boards don't have the capacity for the steam to go through. And also, 
If you're buying one of these and your ironing board's looking a bit tired, you might want to invest in a new ironing board. This is a fairly weighty appliance, certainly heavier than a standard iron with the base. And some ironing boards just can't take the weight of a steam generator iron. That's not such an issue if you've got a table or a worktop nearby because you can put the base on a worktop because there's plenty of the steam, steam cable here, plenty of reach so you don't have to have it on the iron next to you. I filled the Tefal Pro Express with tap water, so now it's time for the initial switch on, just to see how effective the steam output is on this steam generator iron. So it's plugged in, it's filled, I just need to press the on off button. To use the iron in eco mode, I just have to press the mode button once. That noise you can hear is the pump pumping through the water into the boiler from the tank. That's a normal noise. There's also an additional light here on top of the iron itself. That's flashing blue because it's not reached temperature yet. That will go stable when the temperature has been reached. So you can just pop the iron. It's quite safe to leave the iron on the machine while it's heating up and in between ironing. Instead of laying it like this you can also put it on the ironing board like that and I've accidentally it heats up quick I accidentally squeeze that trigger it's a feather touch trigger I just need to actually now pull out the steam let me just lock the iron in place I'll pull out the the steam cable so this thicker cable obviously carries electrical current to the iron as well as steam from the boiler should have done this I expect before I started ironing. It's already, it's fairly warm. And as I said, I'm sure this will loosen up in time. Now it's reached temperature. So that's really, really quick. So now when you want, I want to use it, I can just move the storage clip and take the iron. Now with the traditional iron, I would ex expect a bit of water to spurt out initially. So I would always go over an old towel or something. These noises are normal with a steam generator iron. You will hear it from time to time. The pump will activate to keep the boiler fed with clean water. So you can of course just use the iron as a dry iron, just like this. No need for any steam for some delicate fabrics. I've got the normal setting on. So if I want steam, you just squeeze the trigger. And that that is a lot of steam. Also, you'll notice a slight odour when you first use your iron for the first two or three uses. It's perfectly normal and harmless and that will dissipate after a while. But wow, that is an improvement on my 15 year old t iron. That has got a very hefty steam output and that is the regular steam output. That's not boost. Another advantage of a steam generator iron like this T-Fail is you can use it to iron vertical fabric. So if you've just got a new pair of curtains and you want to steam them, simply put the curtains up on the rail and you can actually use the iron as a vertical steamer. You can also use it as a vertical steamer for clothes. So you can put dresses, shirts, more delicate fabrics, put them on a clothes hanger and then you can use the iron like this without using the ironing board. So it's possible to use this machine without owning an ironing board, but it is easier obviously for some things, especially trousers or jeans to have a board to iron on. Oh, one thing they do point out in the instructions and it's fairly obvious, don't try and steam garments when they're being worn by someone. It's best to put them on a clothes hanger because the steam that comes out of this is quite impressive. And I suggest you have your extractor fan on or a window open when you're using this. Otherwise, I think all your windows are going to steam up. OK, well, I've had a, a first look at this iron. Pretty impressed so far. Very light, very comfortable to hold. I think it's time I bit the bullet and did some ironing. I'm going to start off with something quite easy to iron. This cotton T-shirt. And I'm using the iron on its eco setting. 
When I'm doing some more heavier items, such as jeans, I might switch to the regular setting. So, let's give it a go with my t-shirt. And I don't iron very often, to be honest. But uh, I think I might iron more now I've got my new iron. Right, here we go. So, you can just use it dry, like this. And even in dry mode, the creases are coming out. There's, no, there's a couple of stubborn ones there, so I'm gonna have to squeeze the trigger. Yeah, they've gone. And it is, it's very easy to push. Glides over. So please do not criticize my ironing technique. But yes, it's, um, I have used this a bit since I started the video. It's another day since I unboxed this. So I have used this iron without filming it. And it does, yes, it, it gives out less steam on Eco, but certainly more steam than a regular iron that you have to fill with water. This gets in the way a bit, the cable, so I don't know if uh, it might be better if it's put over that side. So, you know, I've done the front, front and back of the t-shirt. Let's just do the tricky arms. A lot of things I don't bother ironing, to be honest. The main thing I would iron is shirts, but a lot of things I just put away creased. And normally the creases drop out when I'm wearing them. But if, you know, I want to look smart, then I will get the creases out. But for just around the house, I don't think anyone's going to be too concerned with a few creases. So there we go, that's uh, one t-shirt done. Normally I'd have some hangers nearby. Well, actually no, I, I roll my t-shirts nowadays and put them in a drawer instead of wasting up wardrobe space. Now, a lot of these have been washed about a week ago and have been in the basket. And you can see this cotton long sleeved shirt is pretty creased. So, I'm going to switch actually now to the normal mode so we will get some more steam coming out and as I switched to normal mode the light is flashing so I think it's going to increase the temperature so maybe the eco mode would be better for more delicate garments but it's already reached temperature because the light has stopped flashing let's start with the collar And yes, you can see there is a noticeable change in the amount of steam the iron gives out on the normal setting. Probably doesn't need as much steam as this, but it's nice to see the contrast. I think for me, shirts are the most awkward things to iron. And it's normally at the bottom of shirts that always curl up after you've worn them that tend to hold on to the creases. Let's do round the buttons. not necessary to keep squeezing the trigger just occasionally as you get to use and to know your iron you'll know how often to squeeze the trigger you'll know that uh, whether to put it on economy or the regular steam setting but there's still plenty of steam even on economy this is always tricky I can never get these lines out normally at the bottom of the shirt
Should have got my mum to do this part of the video. She is an expert at ironing after having four boys. The iron was always in her hand when I was growing up. It is a very good iron, I would recommend it. Can never the best iron I can never get. You can, it's slightly creased still there. Maybe dampening it down with a spray, but I have left this in the basket for a, probably over a week. If I'd ironed this sooner, then it would have been a bit easier. I do have a sleeve board, but I'm not going to get it out now. It would be easier though to do the sleeves. This is a casual shirt. And again, the sleeves I always find tricky. The sleeve board does help. It's well worth getting. If you iron a lot of shirts, and this is very, very creased. I'll make a bit of a dog's dinner of this folks. So don't comment underneath that uh, you could iron better with a blindfold on, I'm sure you can, but I'll see what I can do. That's not too bad. I've made a bit of a mess of the other side. Ow, <laughs> yes, it, because this gives out a lot of steam, you just gotta be careful. The next uh, shirt, I think I've got another shirt in the basket. The next shirt I'll do on the eco setting. It's another cotton shirt, but it's short sleeved. Let's attempt this uh, sleeve here. And as I said, you can you can put the iron like that or just leave it like that. I wouldn't leave it like that against the board for too long, but just while you're readjusting your clothing. Again, <laughs> my fingers got caught with the steam. Just be extra careful with this iron because it does it gives out a heck of a lot of steam. Right, well, I think that's more, more or less done. Certainly a lot better than it was. I'll just put it on the back of my chair here. I'll switch now to the eco mode by pressing the mode button. And in the basket here, I've got another shirt again it's 100% cotton it is pretty creased but it's short sleeved so should be easier to iron and I'm not sure if this is right but I always do the collar first it is on eco Let me double check. Yes, it is. I thought it wasn't. Like, it's still giving out a lot of steam. Probably, I think for most of my clothes, the eco setting will be fine. It's a nice shape for getting in between the buttons.
this shirt's not quite so creased at the bottom as my other one so what I tend to do I'm not an expert on ironing as you can see but for things like shirts anything that I would be hanging in my wardrobe I normally bring down there's a mark on there oh it's damp I don't know where that's from um, I'd normally bring down my hangers from the wardrobe and I've got um, a hook that hangs over my door and on the hook I put my freshly ironed garments I don't think personally I would buy any other make than T-Fal for irons um, as I said my mum did a lot of ironing when we were growing up and the first time she could get a steam generator iron she got one and it was a T-Fal and since then she's always had T-Fal irons she did that much ironing that uh, my dad bought a, a press an Elna press and there is a video of that well not the, that particular one but a very similar one I bought um, on my channel I did a video of the Elna press but uh, I wouldn't like to think the number of, I uh, number of hours my mum has had an iron in her hand so again not bad at all pop that down let's try a pair of jeans next jeans don't tend to be as heavy weight as I remember them growing up they seem to be a lot thinner material these days so they're not quite as difficult to iron now I, obviously I washed these inside out as you normally should do with jeans they still do fade but at least when they're inside out it does help to retain the colour a bit better these don't look too bad and normally as I said I wouldn't iron these I just put them away and they'd soon the creases soon drop out but for the purpose of this video I will iron a pair of jeans I want to get a nice razor sharp crease down the middle <laughs> not really I'm still on eco so maybe I'll switch I'll just switch to normal it'll just take a few seconds for the steam but even that's the that's the reverse side of the jean so that's one leg and we can compare the legs let's see if I can show you home shopping style <laughs> well there's a little crease still that that's this is the side I've done and this is the side I haven't done yet These are pretty easy to iron actually, these ones. Oh, so the full steam is coming out now. There is a difference. And really, I mean, if you're that fussy, you could do the other side, but it's not really necessary. And the pockets, they're a little bit uh, creased see that little uh, bit there I want to get rid of that perfect and the other one and of course for very delicate fabrics you don't even have to touch the sole plate of the iron onto the fabric you can just go over with steam hopefully I've not steamed up the lens of the camera so there we go that's a pair of jeans very good job
Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions about this Tefal Pro Express Protect steam generator iron, please comment below. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and you'll be notified of all my new uploads. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.